When we're trying to gain a following on social media, it's like how much are you willing to play the game or like sacrifice what you actually want to do for what is considered like popular art. Is social media dead? Twitter is dying. TikTok is on the verge of getting banned in the United States. Instagram has no idea what it's trying to be anymore. What does this mean for artists? Are we in a rapid decline? Is there a path forward on social media for an artist these days? I think you just have to accept that you cannot let algorithms and social media dictate how you feel about what you're creating. And that is, it's way easier said than done. I feel like we have to post on 15 different platforms because nobody knows what platform is the platform to post on. How do we network with our audience in this current state of social media at the moment? Uh, do you need like a high I'm or do you, what type of know. intro do you like? Just do it and I'll see if it works later. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Timothy Von Rieden. I'm back again with Dustin and I'm better known as Von Art Online. We recorded one of these exactly seven months ago and social media is already very, very different just in those couple months. We've seen threads, you know, be birthed and die almost instantly. We have like blue sky now, Twitter is now X. TikTok is now introducing photos. And TikTok so could be potentially banned. And TikTok is like on the verge of getting banned as we speak. Um, mm -hmm. It's literally in Congress at this moment. So yeah, social media has been a wild ride. So I figured we'd discuss that. Yeah, I like these little check-ins because I think they're a good way for us to reflect too on how social media is done for us. And I think maybe that can help whoever is listening be like, oh, okay, I see similar patterns in my own uh, social media or maybe they they don't see it at all in the contrast and they can put in the comments like uh, I don't agree with anything you guys are saying because even <laughs> for us we're curious we kind of feel like we're also figuring things out because everyone feels like a little scattered with social media right now I feel like the bigger accounts that like always were thriving just a couple years ago are some of the ones that I see are floundering the most at the moment. The only accounts that I see like really like blowing up right now are newer accounts, honestly. Well, okay, something we talked about before the recording was you mentioned that you feel like you might have a lot of dead followers because we've had such a longevity or such a long time being on like Instagram, for instance. I wanna hear more of that because I feel similar to that statement. I think, okay, I'm going to speak for Instagram specifically for the moment, because mm -hmm. obviously algorithms are different on different platforms. Um, but I do think there is a general issue throughout all platforms at the moment, and we'll get to that. My following has been gained over the course of like the last five, six years, which in like social media is kind of, old, is kind of old. It's elderly. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Again, this is theoretical because Instagram's algorithm is not public on like YouTube and other platforms in a lot of ways it's percentage based so what i've seen is like you have to get over a certain amount of engagement on instagram for instagram to be like oh your followers like this so we'll suggest it to new ones yeah. but with so many of like you know if half of my followers don't use instagram anymore because of the issues that social media is having it's a lot harder for me to get to that percentage point right so a newer account could easily get to that percentage point because they know all their followers are active they're going to see the post if it's a good post theoretically they're going to like it the problem is on instagram not all my followers are going to see it because they're not using the platform anymore yeah i know we when threads had just released when we made our last video mm -hmm. it was like just a couple days old at that point i think everybody was kind of excited to see a new like player on the board, right? Because everybody had been kind of floundering. Twitter had, was having its problems. Um, Instagram wasn't performing the way that people were used to. But I think like there's been some like huge mishandling within the social media space. For example, I think when Instagram implemented Reels, they were trying to compete with TikTok. Mm -hmm. But then subsequently, they were forcing their users to make content that essentially they could then cross promote on other websites. They were helping their competitor in a way. Um, and then I think we've seen this kind of with threads in a way where they're taking resources away from Instagram, which was once like the main platform for artists in a lot of ways, and then like spreading them out. So it just seems like, yeah, it was exciting to see a new platform come out, but it was weird seeing Instagram not want to focus on their main platform and fix it and then put all these resources into a platform that probably wasn't going to be able to compete. Yeah, 
I agree. I Threads, me and you have, I think, a slightly different feeling about threads. I call threads one of the trickle growth social media where you don't really have to do much with it, but it like steadily just slowly uptick where I think the ones that we tend to focus on are the ones that either feel halted or the ones that are like decreasing, which are like the Instagram, uh, at least for me, Twitter or X, I should say now. I don't know if you feel this at all. When it comes to Instagram, I feel like it's a metaphor for how I view myself as an artist where things are going really well, but then when you see things working for other people or other artists you start to try to like diversify either your product line or what you're creating and you like lose sight of what was working for you in the first place and i think instagram mm -hmm. has really shot itself in the foot because it tried to be everything else when it just needed to be confident and stand strong into what it was doing originally which was just a photo sharing platform essentially I don't think it needed the yeah. short form video. I don't think it needed threads. Well, we're seeing TikTok now implementing photos in response to there not being like the quintessential photo app anymore. Have you been using that? I'm curious. I was literally next week going to start trying to do more photo posts on TikTok because some of our friends have told us that's worked pretty well. And then some has said not at all. So I'm curious, have you played with it? I have not played with it yet, but I plan to mess with it. I, I think the the implication of it is more interesting than anything. What do you believe right now is like the best platform for an artist? That's hard. Like I don't I don't think one exists at the moment. I think, you know, I think everybody still has an Instagram whether they're using it, I don't know. I think Twitter is still very active with the user base that was there. They're all mad about the state of Twitter, but they seem to still be there for the most part. Um which is where the majority of like art directors and stuff typically are. Mm -hmm. Um, so potentially that threads, I don't know, like, yeah, the growth there is good, but I don't think people are actually active. I think it's just kind of the auto follow thing that's happening there. So you feel like you're growing, even though I don't know how many people are actually seeing my posts. And then we have TikTok, which again is another video format. So for 2D artists, it's, you know, not really optimized for us. I feel like I have a very mixed reaction to what I'm about to say. But I would actually say Instagram still holds weight right now in 2024 mm -hmm. as of recording. What is it? March. I think it has potential for the algorithm to really notice you and push you to other people. I would just really try to cut out anything that you would consider filler of your work and like try to only post things that you're very proud of or you're excited to share with the world. If you're willing to do video format, I do think YouTube is a strong competitor right now in the field. But if you're just wanting to post photos, I do think maybe X is still a, the uh, the best one. I like say that with such hesitation because I think for some artists, mm -hmm. Instagram really has been able to take off or they've been able to take off with Instagram. And mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if you do this, but in the For You page, I always have a collection of the one-offs as I call them, where they might have 10 to 20K likes or more, but then their following is only like three to 5K. And mm -hmm. I save all those images in a folder called one-offs. And I just try to see what is the tethering thread amongst all of these. And they tend to be somewhat similar. It's usually like close-up shots of faces or well-known fan art characters. And they're very bold, very colorful. It just reminds me that sometimes when we're trying to gain a following on social media, it's like, how much are you willing to play the game or like sacrifice what you actually want to do for what is considered like popular art? I think that's something to acknowledge because I've found a lot of success finding a niche of like very over the top uh, kind of gaudy fantasy pencil stuff. And I found a, you know, a market where people are engaged with it and they want more of just that. It might not be as much as, you know, a general public audience, but I think I have to be okay with the fact that I want to create art that isn't meant to be, you know, consumed at like a, a mass consumption rate. I did want to go through kind of the old tricks of social media and see uh, kind of what your thoughts on them were. So I kind of wrote a couple down. I've seen this list like vary in a couple different ways, but essentially, so I'll just name them off. So tips for growing, right? This is, mm -hmm. this is what people have said the tips are for years now. So posting frequently, posting fan art, having a consistent style, engaging with your audience, posting reels if you're on Instagram, posting memeable work or funnies or like comic type mm. things that are relatable um, or posting something that is uh, horny on Twitter specifically. Ah, one by one, let's go through them. What was the first one? 
So posting frequently, I think we've already kind of debunked this in a lot of ways in the current like social media game. I don't have any numbers or like evidence to prove that, but at least for artists that have at least 10 to 20,000 or more, that seems to be the case where you don't have to be constantly feeding the beast like we needed to back in the day. Yeah, I think that algorithm has definitely changed. I mean, it's nice to be active and people to know that the account isn't dead in some way or form, but I don't think like, I gotta post twice a week and I gotta post right at this time. I, I don't think these things like really matter as much as people say they do. I think this was an old technique that used to work with certain algorithms that don't exist anymore. I agree. So, and then the next one's posting fan art. And I think like fan art can be great, but I think it's the relatability that makes fan art, you know, meme comics or whatever. These are relatable things. And I think they are successful for the same reasons that fan art are. Like people recognize them or they connect with them instantly. Yeah, I would agree. I, I don't do a lot of fan art, but whenever I do it, they seem to be pretty well. I would say Twitter, I think, has more potential than Instagram if you're going to do fan art. Mm -hmm. Once again, that's an observer from a little further back. You want to understand, like, if you do have a bigger following or even, like, a slightly small to a bigger following, like, what your audience is looking for. Like, if you've never posted fan art before and then you randomly start posting mm -hmm. fan art, like, they're probably not going to engage with it. The work should be good in some ways. I see a lot of people who are like, oh, only fan art is popping off and they'll paint like the shittiest fan art and be like, oh, well, it's Howl's Moving Castle, so of course it'll do well. And it's like, no, the piece is still bad. Mm -hmm. Like you still have to like do like have your own take on it and do good work for people to recognize that, I think. So if you want to do fan art, you, you can't just slap fan art and put it out in the world and be like, okay, this will do well for me. There's still got to be a level of care and heart that mm -hmm. you're putting into whatever you're creating. And then, so have a consistent style. What do you think about that? That one I begrudgingly agree with. I would love to explore more with color or do stained glass, but I do feel like these restrictions, and I realize I'm also aware that they're self-made ones, but it does mm -hmm. feel like if I went into stained glass and started posting more of that frequently, it would be maybe confusing for the people that followed me for my pencil work because when someone follows someone on social media, it's because they want a consistent style based on what they liked and even though i agree with it i want to recommend people not to have that dictate what they create it's done that for me for a, a long time and i felt very much confined by pencils some days and sometimes it's good sometimes it can be frustrating but I think in terms of just purely algorithm growth, I think it helps to have a consistent style. I think this goes back to like, your audience is following you for a specific thing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you then change that randomly, it can be a little, you know, uh, jarring. I just wanna say, I think it should be noted too. You might be surprised where if you started doing something that would be like different from what people are used to, it could actually perform better for you. But I think we have so much of a fear, and I, I do, I certainly do, of if I switch things up completely, am I just going to lose a lot of people? But if you don't take that risk, you'll never know. But it is, it's a heavy risk for sure. Um, and I don't think like, you know, having a post that bombs or like your audience didn't connect with is necessarily like the worst thing on the planet either. What do you think about engaging with your audience? I think it is important. <laughs> I think it's good for retention. I don't know if it helps grow your following in any certain way um but i think like being a real person helps like people want you know they don't want you to be like this fake like faceless company so we we talked about video content really being on the rise um but we see even tiktok is kind of like in a downward spiral at the moment people feel like the growth there just isn't what it used to be do you think instagram is still pushing reels in the way that it used to be I did notice my reels still perform better than static posts. So I guess yes, mm -hmm. but I'm curious what you think. I do think like if you have a reel that blows up, it does get more like grid space on the like for you page. So it's easier for like those people to click on it and see it. But if it doesn't get suggested to the for you page, I don't think it really makes much of a difference. I don't know. What about memes or like horny posts? <laughs> yeah, I think these do well. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to like refute that at all. I think for the memeable factor, I personally feel that because a lot of people feel we're in like this weird time and age where a lot of people are feeling uh, very isolated and very uh, doom and gloom. You just want to laugh. 
you just want to like escape from that reality that you're living in. And I think, yeah, if you're providing funny content or things that are relatable or just something that can help you laugh for a moment. I think all of uh, so many of these come down to relatability and like people viewing like your opinion or the thing that you're showing as like a human interaction instead yeah. of, of like this oh this is this godlike technical skill that like nobody's going to achieve because i'm so good right i like i don't think people are as interested in that anymore especially with like the rise of ai like i think that's kind of killed the impressiveness factor of like technical skill in a lot of ways to like the general audience yes i want more because i'm curious for you because i have seen ai i mean we both saw it like before it came out as mid journey started to roll out and then mm -hmm. all the regulations all the people that were using it not using it all the people that were integrating it and then the backlash and then it has been a wild like two years uh since this has all kind of exploded but i wanted to know for you as a digital artist how that has changed because as a traditional artist i don't know why i'm messing up these words why as a traditional artist mm -hmm. or like i've been called a draftsman and Things that I would never be called 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was, when are you gonna finish these? When are you gonna color them? Now people are like, wow, <laughs> you do these with pencils? Like, that's amazing. And it's like, the only thing that shift is when you look at color digital pieces now, I think a lot of people have a 50-50 mindset of, is this AI or is this hand-drawn? And it's really disappointing to hear that because a lot of our friends have been affected by this in such a negative way. And I'm kind of curious for you with social media, do you ever get that in like either your comment section or do you ever get that at all with people, how they view your work? I'm lucky enough that my work doesn't really feel like AI. So I haven't gotten those types of comments a lot at shows or even on social media. We have friends and some of these like AI programs have definitely been trained on their work and they look very similar. And that's just very unfortunate for those individuals. You know, I don't know how they handle those situations. I think in like my perspective, I don't think there's much of a difference in a lot of ways from like a digital artist to a traditional artist. Like, you know, they're they're scraping traditional artists work as well. Like they can rec they can recreate those in a lot of ways too. So I think that's definitely, you know, affecting the way people are interacting with art online because they can't always tell what's AI and what's not, especially mm -hmm. the more, the non-artists out there. But I think as a digital artist, like it's kind of irrelevant, right? Like it's gonna happen regardless of what I do. Like I'm gonna keep creating art either way. I'm gonna, you know, I always just wanted to make the pictures I wanted to make or the, you know, the images I wanted to make. It hasn't really changed anything for me. And I'm seeing at in-person shows that people are even more excited to interact with art or artists. And I'm not mm -hmm. a traditional artist, so I don't even have that like draftsmanship, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> aura about me, right? Um, and, you know, I think sales in person have increased and sales mm -hmm. online have decreased, certainly. Whether that's just because of AI or other external factors like social media burning down, um, you know, I'm sure it's a combination of the two. Yeah, I would say like, yeah, it sucks. It makes me feel bad, but I've changed nothing and I wouldn't recommend changing anything going forward in like what we do as artists. See, I think this is good to hear because a lot of the people in my Discord community, they're mostly digital artists and they're nervous. I think they tell me they have a sense that people are starting to devalue digital art just the way they look at it because they can't tell if it's AI or not. And when I was at my best friend's house, her husband bought a giant poster. It was a stormtrooper, but as like a samurai. And then it took me mm -hmm. all of like three seconds to look at it and be like, this is AI. And it yeah. like, you know, the early days of Midjourney where it's like even more obvious you could tell. But like, if he can't even notice the difference, I'm like, I am curious how other people are going to be uh, seeing digital art in the future but hearing that from you makes honestly makes me feel more confident that people still respect digital art as its own platform as its own medium and people aren't just going to automatically assume it's ai i definitely think like the type of person i'm making a lot of assumptions right now so, <laughs> um, but uh i think the type of person who's going to go out and buy like a stormtrooper poster isn't necessarily the person who is going to interact with a professional artist to begin with like they want a certain ip of a certain thing and it didn't really matter that it had some artistic vision right so yeah does that take sales away from certain artists probably but i think the percentage is a lot 
lower than people realize. I think there's been a push to elevate artists in the same right. Like, you know, we have these AI bros trying to murder us in our sleep, but we also have mm -hmm. all these other people who are very pro artists also trying to push us up and support us at the same time. So I do think it is kind of evening out. I don't know what the industry is going to look like in another two years or six months or whatever. It's it's definitely very much changed multiple times since I've become, you know, a professional quote unquote artist. It's like I feel ickier about the art industry because of AI, but I don't think there's any reason to jump out of the game yet. You know what I mean? I think it's still a very viable industry. Dustin, I have never known you to like force an emotion or how you feel about something. <laughs> I feel like if you actually felt things were heading in a bad direction, you would say it. Like you wouldn't try to like sugar fluff it just for a YouTube video. I think, you know, okay, concern with AI has to be fought on the legal end of things. I don't think like changing what we do as artists is going to make any difference or like switching from a digital artist to say a traditional artist, if that's not like naturally what you want to do. I don't think that's going to make any difference in your art career, really. I think 2D illustrators and artists and animators and all that need more representation on like the union side of things for like our industry. like. You know, we see like the writers unions and the actors unions, they all had strikes and a big part of that was like AI regulation. I think we need some of that in our field to happen. But other than that, like I don't really do it, you know, make the pretty pictures you want to make, make them digital or not digital Do you know, do your thing. No, I think that's great. I think a lot of people may need to hear that. So I think that's great. <laughs> I took questions from the community also. Oh as a little supplementary. I haven't really uh, looked at them too much, but if you want to take a yeah, gander at them Yeah, let's do secret me. community questions. Oh, you got a yeah. lot. These are great. Da, na, 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 okay, na. can we talk about, <laughs> someone just said, do you think the Fediverse, Mastodon, Miski, Firefish, et cetera, would be a good place for artists? I don't even know what most of those are, so I so, can't speak on those. So exactly, you, an artist, does not know what those are. So the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think the thing is, is with like social media, especially when you see different ones popping up, it's about like the user base. Our general audience is there. This is why we see like blue sky isn't viable at the moment, right? Like, yeah, it has this mm -hmm. like the, the original creator of Twitter is backed behind it. Like on paper, looks great but nobody's there to see your work. It's just people hoping it pops off going there, not actual users to interact, right? So and I think you have this problem with a lot of different social medias where people are like, what about this? What about this? What about this? It's like, it has the entire population determined that this is the social media they're using? No, then no, I don't mm -hmm. suggest it. This is also another issue I see with people being like, what about ArtStation? What about DeviantArt? What about these like, you know, apps or the social medias for artists. I also don't suggest these past being like a portfolio website because like, it's just artists there. It's not normal people engaging with your work. It's other artists. Other artists don't buy my work. Tip I mean, some of them do, but typically that's not where the majority of my sales come from. It comes from like just everyday people. And if everyday people aren't on that platform, because why would they be on ArtStation or DeviantArt considering it's a portfolio website? Mm -hmm. doesn't really make sense. So. I would say, especially ArtStation, that's like a very, artists are on that mostly, almost entirely. Yeah, yeah. And sure, there's there's some argument where it's like, oh, maybe there's art directors on that website um, mm -hmm. and maybe I can get hired there. Like it's, you know, it might have other values for other reasons, but as a social media to like engage and grow your audience, I wouldn't suggest it. I mean, if yeah. you have the energy to put your work on every single social platform out there, I mean, I guess it can't hurt actually yeah side question for you when you finish a piece how many social media platforms do you actually post that piece on three at least so i normally always do instagram i normally always do twitter x and then if i think it's a good portfolio piece i'll put it on ArtStation. um mostly because that's the gallery for my website i feel very intrigued by that because right now i think i post it's instagram twitter x i like that we're calling it twitter x uh Facebook, <laughs> Tumblr, DeviantArt, and then I'll do like a Patreon post. So like right now I'm doing seven and it's kind of in line with how I've done previous Kickstarters where I've noticed I'll get like a trickle of people from each of these random mm -hmm. ones. But I have a Kickstarter happening in summer 
And I'm gonna look at my statistics because if I get like literally zero from any of these social media platforms, I'm gonna stop posting on there because it is a lot of energy to engage with a lot of these platforms at the same time with every single piece that you make. And I feel like something like Kickstarter is a great like statistical number, factual mm -hmm. uh, grid to tell you what ones are performing better. Each one of these platforms also have like very specific ways that they want things formatted to like perform well. Mm -hmm. And that just gets so tiring. I've even seen it when I was trying to move some of my audience over to YouTube is it was like, it was very, very small percentages. Like every like social media that I have like grown on, I've kind of grown independent of my other social medias. Even if you can grow on one platform, it kind of, it doesn't always like translate in the same way. Yeah. But that, that can also be a benefit in some ways, like like the same work might not be interesting to an audience on one platform, but might work on another platform. So it's got its ups and downs. I think the assumption is that if people follow you on one, they'll follow you on all. And I think it's good to note, because you're not the only person I've talked to about this, it, that is not true. If people mm -hmm. follow you on Instagram and you tell them, hey, I have a YouTube, I have a Twitter, I have threads, whatever, it's gonna be like a small percentage of people that will actually take the time to go follow you on the other platforms, unless if they're like a super fan. And mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I think it's more of a benefit because then if you grow a Twitter following, it'll be separate from your Instagram people. Yeah, there'll be some crossover, but for the most part, there'll be like two sets of different people that if you post a sale or a Kickstarter or whatever you're doing, you'll have two different groups of people that will go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Like anytime I'm posting a sale, I'm like, my hope is like, oh, hopefully it'll blow up at least on one of these websites. Mm -hmm. I guess another question, can you discuss your, any experience with having or buying ads or boosting posts on social platforms? I used to do this a lot. I think especially in build up to my previous three Kickstarters, I would literally set a fund uh, aside where the, I think I would have like three to five posts leading up to the Kickstarter launch and each of those I would throw a hundred dollars at. And then my last Kickstarter, it was a art book. I set aside, I think $2,500. Big number, like bigger number than I've ever yeah, used. And it worked very, very well. But I think it was because I wasn't just posting an image with like a bunch of text, like promoting it. It would be a solid image. And then if you swipe right, it would then kind of share the Kickstarter or it would be in the description. I have learned mm -hmm. that if you throw money at a post, if it looks like an ad, people will still not engage with it. Like it still has to be mm -hmm. a good engaged uh, type photo. Yeah, if the if the post wasn't going to perform well at all, then it, it it's not going to help if it's boosted. Pick another question. All right, the one that stuck out to me was from Nomoi, and they say, I feel like it is getting really bleak for us out there. Toriyama just passed away, and the AI bros are using it to memorialize him. And then they're talking about, it just, how do you feel inspired? How do you create something original? I've seen people literally unfollow other people for trying to memorialize artists that pass away. Like when we saw the Kim Jong-ji, uh, arts, AI arts generator come out, there was a lot of backlash against that. I, I just want you to know there is a lot of people, not just in the art community, but in the general public are not on the side of AI and using it to like memorialize people. I think these AI bros are seeing people giving their honest, like heartfelt reaction of like why mm -hmm. this artist impacted them in their art, right? And they're like, oh, this is getting a lot of attention. So they do these AI, whatever, memorialized, whatever, whatever is not genuinely. And people can see that. It's it's obvious that it's not genuine. People are always gonna have bad intentions. It's empty. Who cares? Ignore them. They're, they're irrelevant. It doesn't affect everybody else. You know what I mean? I, I truly do believe people can see through that. Or at least that's, that's how I'm choosing to see it. I think you just have to move forward with the fact that your stuff will be taken. It's going to happen. And yeah. it's better to put yourself out there and like share your work with the world rather than not share it at all. I've noticed this, at least with my work, people have had my back without me even knowing. I've had people send me mm -hmm. messages like, hey, these, these people are trying to take your stuff or they're making a Facebook page or they're making a website with your name on it. Every time my work has been stolen or taken or like, plagiarized or whatever it's been a net positive for me in the sense that mm -hmm. like the person immediately gets called out because it's clearly not theirs and then everybody like wants to defend me without me doing anything kind of like you said and then it just gains this attention around my work that wouldn't have been there beforehand so honestly 
keep stealing my work. It'll be great. <laughs> it's a very weird answer, but I agree. Those are some of my biggest gains <laughs> on social media. Okay, there's one I think we can quickly answer, and it's from Tim Kong Art. It says, what advice would you give for people who struggle to build up a social following after many years of trying on various different platforms, post more often, i.e. weekly, or try to make new content? Do things that are outside of just that social media to build your following. And I know how strange that sounds, but that has been very true for me since the get-go. Whenever I go to a con or something, I'll always see an uptick in my following count. And that has really helped. And it it's getting a little harder to get into bigger conventions, but there's always smaller ones that you can join in. And like, just to get your feet wet. You know, I would say maybe look at like what you're doing. Are you trying to chase that algorithm too much? A lot of times that's what I see when people aren't able to grow that have been trying so long is they're just like, oh, I know I have to post every day. I know I have to do this and I know this, but they're not understanding that they aren't making work that they necessarily are enjoying or that people would engage with you know, at like a human level. I would even I say know. like, Ooh. how how good is the storytelling behind the piece? I'm sure maybe you also feel this at times when you're working on a piece. I'll like do like a really big ethereal fantasy creature character. And yeah, when I post it, yeah, it might be like filled with detail. Like it's very technically mm -hmm. um, like trying to push what I think I'm capable of. But like the story is just fantasy blah. It's just flowy, it's whatever. But then, yeah, I post mm -hmm. a little pumpkin cutting his mouth open. People understand the story behind it and like they can connect to it way more. And I think that's something I wasn't aware I was doing. And then I was like trying to flex a technical muscle when sometimes what people really want is like a story or nowadays what we mentioned earlier, it's like something that would make them laugh or like connect with. Story driven appeals to a much broader audience where like, you know, technical skill, design work, concept work might appeal to like the artist crowd but they're a much smaller audience than the population of Instagram, right? You know, you might do those pieces for your portfolio to show off like how skilled you are. They can serve other purposes. Not everything you make has to blow up on social media to have value. How important do you think social media is to like a prospective artist currently? Mm. For her, my ego over the years, it was very important, but I'm realizing it's not that. Yeah, at all. I think I view social media as a crutch to feel validated as an artist. And I think I've realized social media is a way to connect with other people. It is not my business like I thought it was. My business mm -hmm. is literally making art and going to cons and like selling it or art books or card at whatever it is, where I put so much weight on social media, carrying like the blunt of what I thought was my business. I think like there's tons of different ways to have a successful art business. Many of them don't involve social media at all. Like we know certain people who make a lot more money than either of us who <laughs> yeah, don't combined. have any social media following at all. <laughs> the great thing right now is, is everybody's struggling with social media, huge accounts, small accounts, people just starting out. A lot of people are just kind of giving up on social media and that puts us all in the same boat, which is kind of nice. Sure, post your work there, make sure that you have a presence if somebody wants to find you, but I wouldn't put mm -hmm. all your eggs in the same basket. I think diversifying the way your art business is ran or where you connect with an audience is really important. Obviously, like we're big advocates of like in-person events because those work really well for us. Obviously, like if you can blow up on social media and that's all you need to do, that's great. But I wouldn't rely on that entirely as like, you know, the market shifts. Twitter might, you know, blow up tomorrow. TikTok might not exist in the America then you know in a week. Who knows? Like obviously we hope for the best but we don't know. So relying on one source of like one platform for your business is never a great idea. It's always a little risky. If there's anything that we've seen some of the people that we know that make the most money at cons, they do not have social media followings at all. Like I know one specifically and they're doing yeah, quite yeah. well. It doesn't always correlate to if you want to make money as an artist independently, you don't have to have a social media following because I think it's so ingrained For that sure. they need to be. But if you're doing in-person events, don't worry. You don't need a social media following. It does help. And I think that's something that we should always implement with these like social media videos, it can help. It helps with Kickstarters. It can help with mailing lists. It can help with, you know, Etsy sales, whatever. I think those are good things about social media, but I don't think those should be the driving force behind the decisions we're making in the art that we're making. I think like the landscape of social media is changing, right? And it's, yeah. and it's rapidly changing. 
and where it's going to settle i don't know but like we're kind of all on that journey together and you know if it settles in a place where like you know social media becomes viable for artists in a more meaningful way then you know we can be on that journey together but until then i agree we could literally be doing a video a year from now where like tiktok's completely gone <laughs> instagram's back to a photo sharing platform like we don't know what it looks like so we're we're along the journey with you guys i like how you said it where it's like you don't have to be on the burning sinking ship alone like we are in this together and i think us helping each other when we figure out something that works or it doesn't work or just kind of reminding one another that if you have a percentage of energy during the day Put most of that energy, like 80 to 90% towards the actual art, whatever you're making. And then the remaining 10 to 20, maybe do social media or like how to market or how to post or whatever. Because I really do believe if you have strong art, like Dustin said, social media changes constantly. And if you invest all your time into like learning strategies for 2024 on Instagram or TikTok, that could change in five months from now. Hell, even like a month from now. And I, I would rather personally see you put your energy to the work or the project that you're investing in. Because regardless of whatever the social media thing is at the time, you have the work to share. But feet pics always get engagement. <laughs> no matter what, no matter the year. Just, just a little tip. Use it or don't. I guess the only like <laughs> very big trick that has worked for me, gold leafing. And I know Dustin craps on me from time to time about it. Every time it's, I see you post one, I'm like, oh, it's Tim's best post of the year <laughs> happening right now. Uh, anyways, anyways, let me find like one or two more good questions from these people. Wait, wait, wait. Let's get a cute girl in here for the algorithm. Mm. Come here. See, this is how you this is how you get the views. Zang, come ask a question. We need a cute girl for the, you know, the views. Well, you didn't tell me that. Why not? So I'm in my PJ. Perfect. They like that even better. Get closer. You got to be Zang, we frame. need you in the shot. Here, ask one of these questions from these very beautiful. Wait, get more in the shot. You're members. half in frame. Beautiful. You can't say that. I mean, intellectual community <laughs> members. <laughs> it's illegal for you. You to gotta compliment. be in the camera. If you're not in the camera, it doesn't matter. Yeah, is, there you is go. Is this the camera? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can, I, can I just ask why I suck at social media? <laughs> why is why you working? specifically suck? Why I can't figure it out? Not why everybody else sucks, but why yeah, you? Why I, yeah, give me a case dissection. <laughs> yeah, Tim, tell her why she sucks at social yeah, media. Yeah, Tim. You are failing on social media because we need to see more mm -hmm. behind the scenes of Sang's life and day to day. See, they just want more of you. I hate you need that. to hold up your pieces. Get those I good know. Likes. I cringe. You know those like. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just a piece and I'm like ah! I cringe I cringe. I think we need to get people away from doing that as much I mean if it works though you know what I'm saying it seems to work I'm gonna get you to hold up my work <laughs> <laughs> hi I'm Inkwell they already think you're me when you're like at the booth saying did you know what Mastodon, Miski, or Firefish were like I knew Mastodon but did you know Miski or Firefish mm mm Okay. Never heard of them. What is that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no one will ever know. Trust me. <laughs> I thought Damn. Dustin and I might have just been like a little too old to understand what these new ones are. But if you don't even know, that one user is going to be so upset with us. Do you feel social media has peaked? Is it still worth posting to when next to no one sees your work anymore? It feels discouraging. It feels like my energy could be better used elsewhere. Hmm. It's a fair question. Yeah. I relate to this. <laughs> Has it peaked? I mean, it's definitely had a higher peak than it's at right now. Maybe it'll be more viable in a couple of years. Who knows? I, I don't know where it's going to be at. But like having a social media and having some place for people to find your work on there, even passively is good. But like putting all your energy into it when it doesn't feel great. I don't think that's mm -hmm. a great solution. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can I voice yeah. my opinion? Can a woman speak? Can I speak in this manscape? Yeah. Um, I suck at social so social media, but we we do convention, and I feel like it's kind of a level playing field there, where I just invest more of my time to like make more stuff, and not so much promoting it on social media. Have the same opportunity to make money at a convention. So I I think you can. There's definitely way better things you could find more rewarding and not grind the social media gear because I, I hate it i hate it so your advice 
for the social media video. It's just to not do it. It's to not do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, I actually think you're on like a faster track than Dustin and I are on because we're still like, yeah, but we got to grind the social media wheel and we got to like spend our time yeah. doing that. And you're like, okay, well, you go do that. I'm going to make better products and money over here. Yeah, I mean, I, there's definitely an aspect of like the data that I like enjoy looking out mm -hmm. the algorithms and like I've, you know, I find that interesting. Mm. So that definitely helped. Do you think it peaked? Did peak a couple of years ago. Can it peak again? Potentially, but I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it's definitely not in a good spot currently for sure. Yeah. Speaking from personal experience, I would say 2018 to 2021 was like a big peak, at least in my engagement that I noticed, but it's definitely been way down. It could just because people aren't as engaged with my work. Maybe they're not like what I'm drawing nowadays, but I feel like consistently when I talk to other people, it does feel like a couple years ago is when it peaked. There's definitely newer artists that are still blowing up currently. Like I see people who just like started out a couple years ago or even like this year that are doing really well all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there'll always be like ways to succeed in the space, certainly. I am very much in the mindset right now currently of, like I said, focus on what goes in the funnel. Focus on your art. If you want to make a book, if you want to make a card deck, if you want to make just like one-off illustrations of OCs or something that you are passionate about, focus on that. And even if the numbers are down, even if the algorithms are not in your favor, be excited about what you're working on because it will pay off mm -hmm. in the long run. It's just hard to see it when you're so close to it all the time. And especially when you're seeing the numbers, I think having your social media number dictate how you feel about yourself, your work can be extremely harmful. So I would say be very hesitant and be very cautious with social media and don't make it the thing that matters the most. Being an artist should come first. Make the type of work that you want to make. You know, having a social media like an Instagram or some type of platform, whatever, like I think that is beneficial. I think you should make that account, but make the work that you're going to make anyways. And then why not post it and then forget about mm -hmm. it? Like mm -hmm. if it does well, if you blow up, that's great. That's another resource to network with your audience. But if it doesn't come, if it, you know, if it's not something you enjoy working on, then I wouldn't do it. I, I, I really, especially right now where social media is so like up and down and like not reliable, I wouldn't focus on it very much. What's the coolest thing that you can make? And then just do that. Be the artist that you want to be. Like you oh. don't need that huge following to justify these actions. Oh, I love that. I'm gonna actually write that one down on my post <laughs> notes. If you have any tips or tricks, let us know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Like and subscribe or whatever. whatever.